So we start today this, this new series in 2018. And, and really, um, go ahead, Kimmy, if you want to throw that picture up. This is going to be our series for 2018. It's simply the Word. That's it. For this year in 2018, we are going to focus on the Word of God. Now, we always do this. I mean, we are a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching and teaching church. But, but this year, a little different, we are really going to focus on the Word of God. And a lot of this is stemming from our Bible studies. On Monday nights, we have a men's Bible study and a women's Bible study. And what we're doing is we are going through, verse by verse, different books of the Bible. And, and currently, we're in the book of John. And I, and I think that tomorrow night, I think we resume, I don't even remember if it's chapter 11 or chapter 12. But somewhere around there... And, and we're just going verse by verse. And I get so excited about these studies because there are people that have been in the church for many, many years that are learning brand new things because we are slowing everything down and we're going through verse by verse. And we're learning context. And we're learning what's really meant by some of these scriptures that honestly, in our Christianese, we just throw around yet having no real understanding of what they mean. And, and, and in many cases, unfortunately, some of the t-shirts we have and the Facebook posts we make, doggo, Facebook, every time I think of Facebook, now I think about you, man. I don't know what it is. But unfortunately, some of these one-line or scripture verses that we put out there, we have a misunderstanding of them. We take them out of context, and, 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 and it really it, it makes us look silly. And so what we're doing in, the, in our Monday night Bible studies, and that now is going to become our weekend services, is we are going to go through the Scriptures, verse by verse. And, and we're going to draw from them our weekend messages. You guys, in, in preparing for this message, I read a bunch of different polls, a bunch of different... Uh, surveys, and the percentage of evangelical Christians that read their Bibles is very sad. It's very sad. The percentage that, that even just a handful of times a year read their Bibles is something like 40%. And then if you get to where those that read weekly, maybe once a week, it's even less. Those that read daily, it's even less. And, and I specifically say evangelical Christians because that's what we are. We are an evangelical church. And again, it's another one of those terms that we just throw around. But here's what that means. It means that we believe in this message of Jesus Christ so much so that we think other people need to hear it. That's what it means to be evangelical. It means that we want to evangelize. We want to share the gospel. So among those of us that count this message to be so true, so powerful, that we think others need to hear it, unfortunately, we ourselves don't even read our Bibles. And then here's what that creates. It creates a church, a body of believers, that's illiterate biblically. We don't understand what we believe. And that's really what we set out this year. That's what we're setting out to do is, is in, in a small sense, to encourage us to read our Bibles, but even as a church to say, hey, this is important enough to us. This is going to be our weekend services. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to, to Joshua, to the book of Joshua. And if you don't have a Bible, they're kind of spread around. Dean, if you can grab a handful uh, off the shelf, um, if you would like one, just kind of put your hand up. Please be bold and put your hand up. Dean would love to bring you a Bible so that you can follow along with us. And I, and I want to encourage you. We always do this, but especially this year, I want to encourage you to bring your own Bibles. I, I love it when I, when, I, when I open my Bible, whether it's to preach or if I'm doing my devotions or whatever, I love opening my Bible and seeing notes or seeing highlighter marks, or a big question mark, or, or something that stuck out. I, I just love it. And, and that's one of the things that happens when you bring your Bible to church with a pen or a highlighter. 
you start making notes. And, and again, it becomes something now that you own because you're engaging in it. You're not just sitting and zoning out. Not that any of you do that during our sermons. I know that. Maybe some of you are. You didn't even hear me say that. That's sad. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. I want to encourage you with where we're at here. Here's the deal. Moses, at this point, has been called by God. He went to Egypt, brought the Israelites up out of Egypt, and, and they have wandered in the desert for 40 years. Not unlike some of you. You've been wandering in the desert for 40 years. It's time to cross over into the promised land. Joshua is taking over for Moses. And this is the Lord kind of giving him this charge, if you will, of what, what he's going to do. And, and, and I want to read, I'm going to start in verse 1, but, but we're going to get to this verse 8 where you're going to hear an important part of the charge that he gives to Joshua. Let's read this. Joshua chapter 1, starting in verse 1. And I'm reading in my NLT Bible, so if it doesn't line up with your NIVs, it, it's the same message, it's just presented a slightly different way. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1, it says this, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north. From the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Verse 6. The Lord says to Joshua, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land that I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the, all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Verse 8, study this book of instruction, or in, in your NIV, this book of the law. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So tucked into all of this, that the Lord is instructing Joshua with, he's saying here, you're going to take over. You're going to lead this million plus people. You're going to do this now. Be strong and courageous. And, and mixed in with this, this instruction, this charge to be strong and courageous and be successful, there is some very key scripture right here. What he's saying is this, hold tight to this instruction. And at this time, what Joshua has is the instruction that he gave to Moses for the Israelite people. Hold tight to this, and it will do you well. Hold tight to this book of the law, these instructions, these guidelines. Study it. Meditate on it. Focus on it. And you will do well. And as we look at our lives in this wonderful country that we live in, a country where we the average household has 4.4 .4 Bibles. So that means four whole Bibles in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. 4.4. 4.4, yet a very small percentage of us actually read them. I, I had the opportunity to go to China a few years ago. Well, now it's many years ago. Now it's like 13 years ago. Wow. I'm getting old. And when I was in China, it was, it was amazing because we brought fire Bibles with us. Bibles that were in their language. Because the missionaries over there, they, cannot, they can't get enough of these. 
because those people are so hungry for the Word of God. I've read stories in an in, in extreme devotional book that I have of people in these countries that are persecuted for being a Christian. They die because in their possession they have a folded up, crumpled up, small piece of the Gospel of Matthew. A small piece. And, and they believe with all their heart. They believe in this, this message, in this Gospel. And so what they do is they hold so tightly to this one little piece. Do you know why? Because this is the Word of God. And they put their lives on the line for it. They're willing to die for it. The Western Church has an abundance of these books. There's no threat to read it. I'm looking at Bryce and Levi and Casey sitting there, young children. Well, not children, but young kids. Do you know you can bring your Bibles to school? You can. Laura, you can bring your Bible to school. They can't do a single thing about it. They want you to think that they can, but they can't. That's your Bible. You can't get arrested for it. You won't get... You can do that in this country. God tells Joshua, don't depart from this, and you will do well. Within our churches, look at how our lives are crumbling. Look at the destruction that we're going through, the struggles we have. And, and I don't think it's any coincidence that that is right in line with the small percentage of us that spend time with the Lord each day. Receiving his instruction, receiving his challenge. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you will, to Ephesians. Ephesians. Chapter 6. You see this, this picture that's behind us there, and, and the picture that's on your bulletin. Um, I, I took that picture in the lobby. Uh, and, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a really... It's not a super cool picture because I know there's photographers in the room. <laughs> but it's a cool picture. It'll do. It's enough to promote some of you that are photographers to come and help me. I should have I taken a worse picture is what I should have done. God, I just wasn't thinking, Larry. What the heck? Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. It says this. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know, an interesting thing as we read these scriptures, it's again more biblical proof that there is going to be struggles, that there are going to be battles, that there is an enemy, that there are enemies that we have to battle. That's what this says. Paul is equipping us. He's not saying, don't worry, you're not going to have battles. What he's saying is, there's going to be struggles. And he's saying, and here's what you do. Put on all of this armor, cover yourself, protect yourself, and wield this weapon to defend yourself. 
the Spirit, the Word of God. How many of us, knowing that there is a battle, how many of us, every stinking day, we go into battle, be it in our schools, be it in our friend groups, be it in our workplaces, even in our churches. How many of us, we go into battle and we willingly set this down and leave it in the corner to simply collect dust. And we don't have just one of them. We have multiple of them. We have an, an, an armory in our homes. And what we do, listen to me, what we do is we willingly, nobody forces us, nobody says you can't, we willingly surrender. We willingly leave that which he is equipping us with. Friends, we don't want to do that anymore. He says, take the Spirit, the Word of God, the sword, and go into battle. Understand that as Paul is writing this letter, he's writing to people, this is their weapon in battle. The bloody battles, I, I can imagine the Roman soldiers coming back through these towns covered in blood, their swords dripping, their, their armor dripping. And Paul writes this to this church and says, put on your armor, take up your sword, the weapon. It's like in our day saying, grab your AR, take up your M16. Grab your desert eagle because you're going to be in battle. Take up your sword. Be armed for what's coming. Friends, we are a body that is not armed. And this year our focus is going to be on the Word of God and arming us. Turn with me, if you will, to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 is a, is a powerful verse. And again, if you have your own Bibles, it's a great highlight. It Make a note of it and, and, and read this. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says this, For the Word of God is alive and powerful. And I want to stop right there. I have a commentary that I read that I trust that, that's, that's filled with great stuff. And in this commentary, the way that, that the writer of this commentary described this is he stressed the point of the Word of God is alive. We believe that this is, that the Spirit of God lives in this book and in these truths. We believe that this is, this is Holy Spirit inspired writings, that every word of it's true, that every word of it happened. It's not just stories, it's not just fairy tale. We believe that this book is alive. And, and the way that this, this, this writer of this commentary described it is to say this, it's not just a, a book about past events. It's not just a book that describes what took place in Egypt thousands of years ago, what took place in Jerusalem thousands of years ago. It's not just a book that writes about a, a great man named Jesus. But that this book is alive, alive to the point that it is for today in our lives. That this book... This book can transform lives. Does anybody remember a program? It was really, really popular like 15 years ago. It was called Alpha. Raise your hand if you ever heard of this, this program called Alpha. Okay, a few of you. I, I was very involved with this when I first started coming to Maranatha. And, and there's this guy who, who kind of helped establish it. His name is Nicky Gumbel. And he did all of these teachings. And Nicky Gumbel's testimony, he was in college, and a friend of his got saved became a Christian. And because Nicky Gumbel cared about his friend, he wanted to disprove this. He set out to find the holes in this whole thing so that he could save his friend from being saved. Sounds funny coming out of my mouth. But that's what he set out to do. And here's how he set out to do it. He's a good student. He's a smart kid. So what he set out to do was read the scriptures. 
And so he starts reading the Bible. Literally reads all night long. And through reading the living word of God, he gets saved. That night, surrenders his life to Jesus and never looks back. This book, the word of God, is alive. And it is for us today. Let's keep reading. It says this, verse 12, For the word of God is alive and powerful. Now li listen to this. Listen to how the writer of Hebrews describes the word of God. He says this, It is sharper It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Cutting between soul and spirit, between bone, between joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, dividing soul and spirit, cutting between, your NIV, I believe it says, bone and marrow, revealing our innermost secrets, our innermost struggles. The Word of God penetrates our hearts, the Word of God convicts us of our sin. The Word of God brings, brings healing and brings truth. When I think of the, what, what this, this description, cutting into our hearts where, where for many years we have been lied to about one thing or another, untruths that we am told, untruths about the Bible, untruths about being a Christian that we, have, that we believe, that, that we have, have stuck so strongly to. And reading the Word of God in the context of the Word of God, with the power of the Word of God, can set us free from that. The Word of God is alive. And friends, this year, this year what, what our heart's desire is as a church, is that we would focus on the Word of God. That every weekend our messages, they're not topical, and we find Scripture to, to fit them, There's, that's fine. What we're going to do is something different. We are going to look at the Scriptures, and we are going to see what the Scriptures bring to us. And we're going to kick this off in a, in a week or two. Here's what we're going to do for the next week or two. We are going to learn about the Bible. We are going to learn what's the Bible made up of. When was the Bible put together? How was it put together? What is this canon? What is the Torah? What is the, the Pentateuch? What, what are all of these different things? What is this whole New, New Testament, Old Testament thing? Because I thought we could disregard the Old Testament. Why in the world do we keep going to the Old Testament? That doesn't apply anymore today. These are, these are mistruths that many of us have believed. And so what we're going to do these next couple weeks is we're going we're gonna to put foundational pieces in place of the Word of God. This Bible, our holy book, that we are to mold our lives after. And then once we're done doing that, we are going to start in the book of Matthew. And, I, and I've, I've started to chart this out, and here's the first thing. Th this first Sunday that we do Matthew, it's going to be so stinking exciting, because you know what we're going to read? Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. Do you know what it is? It's the genealogy. Most of us look at it and we go, okay, well, I can skip that. It's boring. It is. It's, it's lame. But I want to tell you something. I can't wait for this Sunday because it's... I'm going to blow your minds. Because those 12 verses, listen to this, those 12 verses are rich beyond what you can imagine and revealing who God is and why Jesus came. I cannot wait... Louis, man, if you're turning to Matthew right now and you're going to read, he is. You were. He was. All right, nobody can read Matthew from now until that day. It's like, it's like meeting with a married couple. You can't kiss until the day of the wedding now. You, no, I'm just kidding. But I'm serious, you guys. This is what we're going to do. We are going to understand Scripture. Who wrote it? Who is it being written to? What is the context of it? 
we're going to learn what does God have for us. And we are going to invite the Holy Spirit to take this double-edged sword, listen to me, to take this double-edged sword and pierce our innermost beings and heal us and guide us and direct us. You guys, in John chapter 17, Jesus is speaking. And he's talking about eternal life. And he says this. He says, and this is eternal life. That you might know the Father and the Son. And this is eternal life that you might know him. If you've turned there, it should be verse 3, I believe. And I want you to circle that word know or highlight it or do something with it because that word know, it's, it's used in the same way where it says, and Adam knew Eve, knew Eve intimately. There's this definition of intimacy that, that most of us don't imagine. You guys, that's our heart's desire as a church, that we would know our God, that we would know our Savior, that we would know the Holy Spirit, that we would intimately have a relationship with Him, that we would know Him. In this year, we are going to focus on knowing the Word.